people of God, how y'all doing? You doing fine? Good. I'm doing fine. I'm cloud now. Uh, today I am here doing a part two of my brother, Elder Dr. Rodney Jones, and uh, got my tea, and we're ready to drop in here, jump in here. Um, we are going to go back to some of the questions that came to us um, on yesterday uh, because um, we need to make uh, we need to make ourselves clear on uh, a couple of the questions. <laughs> And then we'll move on to the 30, 60, and 100 fold, okay? Uh, it's going to be a doozy and another half hour with the brother. It's just an honor to have him here because he's a very busy man, as I am. <laughs> All right? And so I guess I'll see y'all in a little more than about 60. In the binging. In the, in the bini, in the bininging. Yeah. In the, in, in, uh, in the listen properly in in the beginning yeah in 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 the beginning in the beginning in in the be in in the beginning It's the show that will get you thinking And where the topics are hot Feel free to comment Whether we agree or not Cause he's got something to say Sir Walter Jones Sir Walter Jones Seven days a week, always on time, but this time is not free. So Walter Jones, always on sleep. Latest trending topics, have you jumped in out your seat? He's got something to say. Come on in. The water's fine. Hello, everybody. So Walter, so Walter Jones Show. I'm here. It is the uh, Midday Connection. Baby, come on in. The water's fine. Water's fine. Y'all all right? It's so good to see all you bunkers out here. Man, a whole bunch of y'all are here. A whole bunch of y'all are here waiting and waiting and waiting for the teaching today. I got a lot of notes here. I've got some questions from yesterday for the, for the furtherance uh, of and explanations on some of the things that we did talk about. Hopefully we can get that taken care of. And then we're going to move on to some more teachings here. I got my elder brother, elder brother. Well, he is an elder brother. He's uh, older than me. There's Larry above me, and then there's Rodney above him, and then there's Michael above him. It's it's nine of us. People people be shocked when I tell them it's nine of us. My mother is from Arkansas, Little Rock, Arkansas. My dad is from Jackson, Mississippi. And I guess in the South, they just didn't have anything else better to do <laughs> but to uh, go in the field and, and pick uh, – stuff <laughs> and then come home and well be fruitful and multiply <laughs> and here we are see thank god for lawrence c jones jr and evelyn uh jones and whom i get my middle name is deberry uh my mother's maiden name is deberry and that's where i get my name from and i believe at one time my brother rodney had a, a name that was like my name deberry and then it got changed. He'll tell y'all that story right now. <laughs> Doc Jones, how you doing, man? I'm all right. How about yourself? I'm doing the best. I know how. Your, Good. Your, your name was DeBerry too, wasn't it? My name was Rodney Lawrence DeBerry Jones. Mm. Or Rodney DeBerry happened? Lawrence Jones. Hmm? Yeah. yeah so, so in elementary, elementary school, school, my name was Rodney DeBerry. DeBerry. By the time I got to high school, it was Rodney. It was before high school. It was Rodney DeBerry Lawrence Jones. But now my name is Rodney Lawrence Jones. Did yeah. you ever hear the story of, of why did it change? Um, no, no, and and yeah, and even on my birth certificate, DeBerry is nowhere nowhere to be found. Wow, they yeah. hid you. Yeah, they <laughs> hid it. They, they got rid of all the signs of DeBerrys. That's amazing. You know, I'm still hearing the echo, and even though I got my echo button on. Oh, 
Okay. okay. Let me Maybe, tell you. Uh, I think it might be you this time because I don't want people thinking it's me again. I got Say the something. same connection, Dr. Jones. I'm oh, going to change because I'm on okay. Echo 2, but I'm going to change. Now, I just reinitiated it. Now, say something. Start talking. Testing one, two, two, okay. three, 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 tres, tres. It'll give, give it about 13 seconds yeah, to make that connection. Seconds. Better. While he's doing that, come on in, y'all. The water's better. fine. The water's fine. Better, better. better. Hey. Okay. Better? Yeah. It, it, the button was pressed, but I guess when you came on, it needed, it needed to be re, you know. Repress. So you needed a refreshing. Yeah, a refreshing. Mm. All right. We got Baba Shea. I felt that all in my shame. Did you feel it? <laughs> Did you feel it in your turnaround? Your, yeah, I, felt, your, I felt it in my turnaround, your man. Shoulder, your, your Shondo. My Shondo turned it all around. <laughs> yeah. All Clocks right. Hiya. Hiya. Go ahead. Now, L. Jones, when it came to last uh, yesterday's uh, question about speaking those things that be not as though they were, you upset it a lot of women <laughs> good good then my work is done i'll see y'all later <laughs> hey the men was like oh yeah i get it i get it. but the women woo, it was hot under the collar <laughs> <laughs> they hot under the collar they can't take they can't take too much of that uh erasing mm. stuff that they were they were taught when they were in church as a young one. yes right. now yeah i got a lot of messages uh, so, uh from all women who, who didn't like it but, but they now, now the ones I'm going to read, it doesn't apply to these people here. All right, uh -huh. they're fine, but they're bunkers. They understand, and I think uh, some of them are asking because they just need some clarity on some of the scriptures that is used and how do we make sense of these scriptures? Sure, I love people. it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna read these couple here. These couple are okay, but there are others that came to me. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I feel I I feel some kind of way. I, okay, this one here says, I have a question about Romans 4, 4 and 17 that you and your brother talked about. I heard the explanation and know that uh, we as humans do not have the same creative, uh, creative authority God does. Mm -hmm. I completely understand that. What I see, I told you, man, my, my bunkers, they understand. They understand. What I do not understand is this. If, if Christ dwells in me and me in him, can it be him speaking through me and then have me use my faith to bring it to pass? I don't know any other way but uh, the use of my faith. I also do not want to continue living the appearance of a pauper's life. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, because I know God has more in store for me than what I'm living now. You understand that, right? Yes. Yes. I know the word of faith people have jacked this scripture up, but now, uh, but how else will the impossible be possible? For example, de uh, deadness of Sarah's womb and Abraham or Abram being old, on and on. God did speak to Abram, so why can't God speak through us today concerning the impossibilities? Mm. She broke that thing down. Yeah. I was quite impressed with that. Quite impressed. Well, yes. yes. <laughs> that's, hard, that's hard to get you to be impressed, sir. It's hard to impress me. <laughs> Once again, my job is done. I'll holler at y'all later. <laughs> handle, handle your business, brother. How do you explain all of that? All right. Uh, Facebook family, uh, I, I want y'all to write some things down. This is what I want you to write down. Number one, when studying your Bible, I want you to ask three main questions when you're studying. This is called inductive Bible study. I don't know who's calling me, but... He's got to go to voicemail. Probably a Brony Scott. Yeah, it could be. No, usually Lisa Aikens call me when I'm live. <laughs> Brony will wait till I'm off. Live. <laughs> right. Yeah. When studying, ask three main questions. Number one, what does the Bible say? In other words, what are you actually reading? And in many cases, and, and, and I encourage everybody, don't read the Bible one time. Read that passage of scripture multiple times. Read it 10 times in one setting before you come to a conclusion. So you want to know what does the Bible say? Number two, you want to know what does the Bible mean? I need somebody to know that there's only one interpretation of scripture. There's not many interpretations. God only meant one thing and one thing, period. This is what he meant. Oh, the private so interpretation? Does, huh? The private yeah. interpretation? No, even Paul said there is no private interpretation. <laughs> yeah. So we see it means this, but it didn't know it, it's only meaning one thing. One thing. Uh, so what does the Bible say? 
What does it mean? And how can I apply it? Those are the three questions you always want to ask. Number two, there is a terminology called context. Context is key. I need everybody to write down, write that in your description, write it in the comment section in bold. Content is key. Content is key, which means uh, when you're reading scripture or anything, look for three things. Number one, look for repeated words. How many times did he say love, love, love? That means love is a key word. Look for repeated words, look for repeated phrases, and look for repeated ideas. This particular idea keeps popping up. So apparently this must be something called context because the writer keeps putting this up. Yep. Here's another thing I want you to write in all caps. Never teach what you've heard. Only teach what you've studied. Mm -hmm. Never teach what you've heard. Only teach what you've studied. If you didn't study it, don't teach it. Right. Brother Jones, I was preaching that the oil refused to flow on Sam on, on Jesse's sons. I did too. But the scripture never mentioned anything about no oil never. refusing to flow. Never. So I'm preaching. I've not even found where the priest had bells, and when he went into the high place, he had the bells and a, ro and a rope. I even see that in scripture. No. So I stopped teaching what I've heard and start teaching what I've read. Yes. Now, let's go back to Romans 4 and 17, and let's take a good look. And I thank you for this opportunity, and thank you even for the questions that has been asked. I think that's very good, and I, and I, and I, and I commend the person who is, um, I don't want to use the word challenging, but bringing up this for a clear understanding. Love it. That's what this is all about. Yes, so when you, they do that. Yes. So when you get back to Romans 4, 17, and the question is, can we call those things that be not as though they were? First thing I want to mention to you, that entire fourth chapter is about Abraham. Yes. So the context of that whole chapter is Abraham. Mm -hmm. Part two, it's Abraham and his belief in God. Part three is God told Abraham that he was going to make him or he made him a father of many nations. Part number four, Abraham, the Bible says, believed in the Lord and God imputed it upon him as righteousness. I'm going to put a pin in there and throw a monkey wrench in there. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is called the blessing of Abraham. The mm. blessing of Abraham is when God imputed his faith as righteousness. That is the blessing. Number four, God promised Abraham that he would be a father of many nations. Genesis 17, 4 through 14. The Bible said that Abraham believed, which means to have faith in and to be fully persuaded in. Lastly, on that point, God promised Abraham, Genesis 17, 18 through 22, that Sarah would have a child. Mm -hmm. When you get back in Romans 4 and 18 and 19, it said, who against hope believed in hope. Well, what was the hope? He had no hope on a normal basis. Because Sarah was dead. Her body, according to Genesis 11 and 30, she was barren. But Abram believed in hope against hope. Yeah. What did he believe? According to Romans 4 and 17, he believed in God. The Bible says, who does two things? God quickens the dead and God calls those things that be not as though they were. What was the dead as we spoke about yesterday? The deadness was the deadness of her womb. God quickened her womb. My question as it was on yesterday, if we can call those things that be not, why aren't we quickening the dead? Who always tell us to only use part B and never use part A? Mm. God is not going to write in small print who quickened the dead and then write in bold print and say, but you all can call those things that be not as though they were. True. 
when it comes to answering or hearing from God, first Peter, first John, first John 5, 14 and 15 says that we can only ask God for anything that is according to his will. If it's according to the will of God, then God hears us and then we have the petition that we need. So no, the believer cannot create. We only call to procreate. Mm -hmm. Are you mm -hmm. hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, and we only move based on things that Christ have already died. So what we do is we receive things by faith. Yeah. We don't call nothing. Anything that we receive has to be something that's already existing. How do you know? Yeah. Because my faith makes it seeable. Yeah. If faith makes it seeable, that means it was already there. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. That's that's a great breakdown and 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 it makes sense. If mm -hmm. God is telling me to do something or say something, that means he had or he has already made a way for it to come to fruition. Yes. So I don't wake up with this uh and treating God like a some kind of a puppet. Correct. And saying, okay, I'm going to do this today. And then God said, well, since he said it, I'm, I'm, I got to do it. Your prophets think that God listens to them. Exactly. Your modern day prophets believe that God, but God don't right. listen to a prophet. The no. prophet only speaks what God says to right, speak. Right, right. And I think what we've done was we took some situations and instances in the Old Testament mm -hmm. where God told a prophet to do something, someone, something very unique that we had not seen since. Mm-hmm. Like stop the sun. <laughs> like obey him. <laughs> okay. And so if you're going to speak anything to existence and you think you can, why aren't you speaking uh, obedience? Why aren't you speaking that all your children are saved? Now you can pray. You can pray. That your children are saved. Yes. Uh, but in many cases throughout world history, many of them did die without salvation, unfortunately. You know why? And Tell me why. Because God doesn't move against our will. There it is. How does he move, I wonder? He moves according to his will and our will. Since the creation of time, when God created man, he created man as a free moral agent. Mm -hmm. God didn't want a robot. He had them. They were called angels. Yeah. yeah. God wanted man to be a representative of himself on earth, and he gave him free will. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's it's his and ours. It's a partnership. <laughs> Let me say, your steps are ordered by God, not the other way around. Well, no, you missed what he said earlier. This one what right he here. said. But what about when the preacher is hooping and say, "I," because <laughs> <laughs> you the one stopped, said, "Don't, don't." Yeah, I stop saying I heard. I stop <laughs> saying now I read. <laughs> Even Jesus said, "You have read in the scripture." Yeah. He never said when he said you heard mm -hmm. is when they was in trouble. Yes. He said, "You have heard that it has been said." <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So when God tells me to, uh, if I'm if I'm led to go and tell somebody something, God God told me to do it. Yeah. In, in many cases, notice this, and I know mm -hmm. uh, this has happened to you. Mm -hmm. You were reluctant to do some of the things that God told you to do. Of course. Because it wasn't not it wasn't about you. You no. you don't you wanted this cup to pass. Yes, sir. <laughs> And yes, then sir. you realize I better obey God. Yeah, and because then, he got a cup for me if I don't. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we have to be careful with that. Now, here's 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 another one here. Uh, two, 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 uh, almost, uh, she brings up three scriptures. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read all three, and I want you to see if, if, if you can make sense of this. Because here's the problem, Elder Jones. Mm -hmm. if, a, if a scripture says one thing. And you're settled on that. Then you go further in the Bible and find a scripture that seems to say the opposite mm -hmm. of your original scripture. Typically, what a person would do is they'll lean on the one that they like. True. And they'll, they'll say, no, but this is what the Bible says. Then you go over there and say, no, this is what it says. And then they'll say, they'll deflect and say, no, 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 no. But I'm, read, I'm reading here. Instead of taking the both of them, and analyzing them both to see, are they fighting against each other or are, is one 
high five in the other. <laughs> right. Okay. Scripture never contradicts itself. Yes. And it's interesting. We got what 40 writers. Yes. Many of them never met each other, mm -hmm. but the Bible is the only book that is one common goal uniform from Genesis to X to revelation. There's no controversy in scripture at all. Yep. Who does that? Most of those you and I never can, met, they never yeah, met you, each other. Most of them. Yeah. You and I can, can write a book based on our, what we've seen together on the same ship and still have conflicting stories. Mm -hmm. But yep. the Bible has 40 authors, mm -hmm. what, what, 1500 years of writing or whatever, oh, absolutely. and not one contradicted the other. Yep. Many of them never even met each other. Yes, absolutely. I, yeah. Because Paul was talking about grace through faith mm -hmm. alone. Faith, that's all we need. And then James says, now show me your faith and I'll show you some works. Works. Mm -hmm. Sound like they're fighting each other. That's what it sounds like. All right. And that's what the non-believer want to make you believe or absolutely. the believer with a kind of lack of understanding. Yep, absolutely. And all the way back to Martin Luther, not not the king guy, but the other the original oh, Martin Luther. Yeah, yeah. Not the, the junior. G, okay. <laughs> he did not like the book of James because he felt that it was going against Paul's writings to the point yeah. where he called it the epistle of straw. You know, it is mm -hmm. a straw. But he didn't understand that James was saying, if you are saved, you are going to show some sign. You're going to produce good works. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah and that yeah. word or good deeds. That word works there is good deeds. Yes. yes. And Jesus says, let your light so shine that man may see your... Uh-oh. James goes in the deeper, but it's the same thing. Yes. Yes and no. Because Paul talks about works. He's talking about the works of the law. Yes. Being conformed to the law. James is talking about uh, if you're saved... You got the love of Christ in you. You're going to go about doing and performing good. Yes. Saints don't cuss people out. Right. Saints that are people that are saved are not walking over the sick, the homeless, the shelter. We are the ones that are looking to cover, to care for, because those are called good deeds. The book of Acts says God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost, who went about doing good because God was with him. Yes. Lastly, he said, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and mm -hmm. glorify the Father. That good works is called faith uh, works in, in the book of James. Yes, absolutely. Good to see it. That Pastor, Pastor Terrell Edwards. Dr. Edwards here. Yes. Cortez asked the question, why were, uh, books, why were books taken out of the Bible? Now, you got to be careful with the question because is that the right question? True. Were they taken out the Bible or were, were they taken out the Bible? <laughs> yeah, maybe they were not added because yeah. there were seven criterias for a passage of a book to be added to the Bible. It oh. had to fit all seven criterias. Otherwise, it didn't make the the I forget what the terminology well, is. Canonical to be canonical. Can, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Because you yeah. have the Apocrypha, which have mm -hmm. obviously the, the what we may call the Catholic book. Sure, <laughs> sure has more in there, but they're very questionable. Yeah. Then you got the lost ones that I've been trying to keep, tell y'all, keep them lost. Yeah, they keep lost. <laughs> yeah, because I can't deal. We're trying to deal with the 66. Do we need seven more? Right, right. <laughs> exactly. You keep right. <laughs> you don't even know the book of Genesis yet. So we, we, Yeah, we can't even live Romans 5. Do we need to add <laughs> six more? <laughs> Come on. They were lost for a reason. Yeah, <laughs> they were lost for a reason, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> because we have the book of uh, Enoch, the book of Joshua. Look and look at the Old Testament. The Old Testament talks about many books. Yes, it does. That we don't even have Samuel, we don't have. Spear, and and all. Mm -hmm. and it's a whole bunch of books that the Bible speak of. Correct. Right. We have enough. We got enough. Enough is enough. We good. <laughs> <laughs> we good. Uh, we so here's the, here's the verses that she bring up. Second mm -hmm. Timothy three sixteen, Good one. all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, uh, uh, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. What you say? That's a very good point. If you look in Second uh, Timothy three and eighteen, first of all, look at the writer. The writer is the Apostle Paul. Thank you, Bishop Sanders. I used to call him Apostle Paul. 
but he had to correct me. He said, it's not apostle, it's apostle. <laughs> so the writer is Apostle Paul, and the recipient of this letter is Timothy, the second one. <laughs> not the first Timothy. The, the, <laughs> right. the, 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 the recipient is Timothy. So it was written. Now, Paul is mainly referring to, now watch this. Paul is the major writer of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Paul said to, Pete, to Timothy that you've known these scriptures from a child up. That's verses number 15. Now, wait a minute. He says, you know them from a child up, but yet Paul is still writing scriptures. So Paul is not really referring to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and all of those. Because he says all scripture. Yeah. Scripture in the New Testament was the Old Testament. Yes. Number two, Paul was speaking about the kingdom of God from the Old Testament. He preached Christ from the Old Testament. So what he's referring to, now he did use the term all scripture, which we can include it now because we have both the Old and the New Testament. And what he says is, it is all God breathed. The problem with us is we don't know how to search the scripture, how to rightly divide the word of God. He says, study to show yourself approved, which means be diligent in your quest for God. Okay. He says, it is profitable, which means it is beneficial. It is useful for doctrine or for teaching or for instruction, for reproof or for conviction so that you can show me my error. So you're supposed to be able to take the scripture and show me the error of my ways. And because of scripture, then I'm going to, um, you know, do right according to scripture. And it's for instruction, which means for training up. That's what Paul was referring to. But mainly he was talking about the Old Testament scripture. Now, we got to be very careful with that because in the old scripture, it includes the law, which we have to understand that a great portion of the law was temporary. Yes. And so, but we won't get into that because we got to get into the book of Galatians. However, mm -hmm. it said that it was all written for our learning, right? Mm -hmm. And for an example. So we to see what took place in the scripture and that's how we're supposed to live life. Well, you said something important in the beginning about Paul and his writings. Mm -hmm. uh, can you go to Second Peter, chapter yeah. three? Mm -hmm. Second Peter, chapter three, sixteenth verse. Second Peter three and sixteen, probably uh, some hard that Paul was saying. Yep. Yeah, but but it it co-signs what you said about his writings of scripture. Mm hmm. What? Is yes, that? sir. He says, as also in all his epistles speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable uh -oh. wreck, which means the wrestle. Yes. As they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Did you notice that word? He said, as they do other scriptures. Mm -hmm. So if there's other scriptures, Peter is saying that Paul is writing scripture. He's writing scripture. Yes. Yes. And much of it, he says, some of it is hard to, to understand. <laughs> because that that Paul walked, sir, that's why Paul had that thorn in his side. That brother saw some stuff. Yes, it. He can't, I can't even tell y'all what I saw, but God gave him wisdom. Yes. Paul didn't even consult with man, mm -hmm. as he said in Galatians, the first chapter. Yes. Which Sometimes I wonder why y'all think that I got to go to school once God called me to preach. Yep. But I'm going to leave it alone. That's leave for tomorrow. Alone. Let me do that. You leave yeah, it alone. Let alone. <laughs> let alone. I, I don't want to slap nobody and walk away. <laughs> so it, it is important because now, and I'll say this, a lot of times when Paul says, I, uh, I'm saying this, not the Lord, or, you know, when he uses that, not, not him, but me, what Paul is really saying is, I have been given the authority to write this. Yes. which means it's not already written in the Old Testament. There you go. Because most of what Paul wrote about in the New Testament has already been written in the yes. Old Testament. Yes, and he shows it to you. And this is mm -hmm. why when you have a good study Bible, notice the yes. indentation. The indentations? The indentation. 
or it would be all caps. Yes. Some of your study Bibles, certain passages of scripture would be in all caps. That means that's an Old Testament quotation. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So, go ahead. Um, so he refers back to the Old Testament. Meanwhile, he's writing New Testament. New. And then Correct. he's telling you about mysteries mm -hmm. that no one knew. He says, and then even the principalities. They didn't know it. They didn't know it. Ephesians 3 and 10. So when Jesus went and sent for this man, he put something supernatural and a vision in Paul. This is why many of these Hebrew Israelites and they Oklahoma, can't stand him. They can't stand Paul. They hate him. Yes. They and hate him. Us hate him. <laughs> yeah. And, and most of your Hebrew Israelites, your get rich scheme prophet, um, excuse yeah. me, <laughs> your prosperity gospel speakers, they only stay in the Old Testament or in the parables. Yeah. Sir Walter D uh, Jones, Walter D. Barry mm -hmm. Jones. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A.K.A. Buckwheat. Come on, put a respect on that. <laughs> A.K.A. Ward. I need the you know, people of you know, God. You're the, you're the original Buckwheat. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I need the people of God to understand, sir, that there is two sides of the cross. Mm -hmm. Many people don't recognize but there's two sides to the cross. That's what Jesus did on before Calvary and what he did after Calvary. Many of your get rich scheme preachers and prophets can only preach what he did performing miracles before Calvary. Yes. Because they can get rich off of uh, the parables and they can challenge you to sow money from the parables. But when Christ got up on the other side of the cross, there's salvation. There's sanctification, there's justification, there's redemption, there is all of these other words. How come we don't preach on that side? Uh oh. I'm gonna leave that one alone. Yeah, you you leave. <laughs> yeah, that was for my show. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you leave it alone. Um, in my in our private Zoom session, Terrell Edwards is messing. It, it, it's as if he's in the private Zoom session. Here's what he said when we touched on this. Uh, can we please finally? In 2024, tell the people that 1 John 3, 2 is not God speaking, but rather a salutation from John to Gaius. We've mm -hmm. heard it said uh, uh, for years, uh, Lord said, the Lord said, he was making a salutation mm -hmm. about uh, being in good health and prosper. I pray that you, your soul on and on. And we looked, we took that, the prosperity gospel and the, the word of faith gospel took that saying, this apply to all of y'all. Yeah, yeah. And then they start prophesying to you. Yes. Now, I pray that all of y'all are in good health. That's but, a good prayer. Yeah, it's a great prayer. <laughs> but our, um, we're talking about context, context, context. context. <laughs> yes, because the prayer of Shabazz was that his, uh, uh, his, his room, that his territory will be enlarged, right? Mm hmm Is that a prayer for everybody, though? No. Nah. Uh, because but, some of man, some of us can't do much with the closet that we live in, sir. You <laughs> you you nitpicking, sir. Because <laughs> I need you to Pentecost. understand. See, everybody cannot be rich. Everybody cannot be wealthy. Everybody cannot be a prophet because God can't trust everybody with every and anything. Right. There are some people the love of God won't let you get above what you have right there now. There it is. Because God knows if you get above that, you're yeah. going to walk off and leave him. And a yes. righteous God don't want his son or daughter to walk off so he cannot entrust. He gave according to their several abilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's Absolutely. what's going on. Which is why Paul still had a thorn. <laughs> That's why he had a thorn. They don't understand. And somebody else said, well, I have a thorn. No, baby, the only one that the Bible wrote of as having a thorn is the apostle Paul, mm -hmm. because he says a messenger of Satan was sent to buffet, buffet him, which means to beat him. But Paul recognized that he's doing this because I have seen so much until these, this messenger is what keeps a brother humble. That's what Paul mm -hmm. said. We got members that'll keep us humble. Come on, somebody. <sighs> Man, you you talk you talking so so bad that the ambulance is coming. <laughs> you heard them; they just went past. They just went past. Yeah, I'm over here, so Walter's over here. <laughs> I, they passed you because the blood is on your door. <laughs> <laughs> my question is, where did y'all get this New Testament blood from? Uh oh. But I'm gonna leave it alone. Sorry. Oh man, see, see, you petty, you petty. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of kind of slow at the junction. <laughs> Larry said fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's Second Timothy. Mark 11, mm-hmm. 23 say, For verily I say unto you, what uh, uh, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he said. Mm. Uh Oh, yeah, we're in trouble now, doc. So I guess this is a connection to the call those things that be not as though they were. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to write a song for you. Like to hear it? Here it go. <laughs> so number one. We're in Mark's gospel, the 11th chapter. Jesus and his disciples was on their way to the temple. Jesus is hungry. He sees a tree that is perpetrating, right? Yeah. This particular tree is called a fig tree, which is a type of Israel. Yes, sir. Because two things. He dealt with the tree and then he went into the temple to and beat. he asked them out. The, the you know why? <laughs> yeah. You know why he had to cast them out? Tell me why. Because the Bible said that sin represents or unleavened represents sin. That's right. Right. And during that season of the Passover, they were not to have un- any unleavened nowhere in their house. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The temple was the house of God. Yes. The sin that was going on is the unleavened, is the yeah. leaven. Yeah. So Jesus had to put out all the leaven from the house of God. Yes, sir. So on his way to that place, he sees a tree that's perpetrating. It's pretending like it has fruit, which is what the Pharisees and all of them were doing. Jesus curses the tree, goes in the temple, leaves, comes back the next day. They notice that the tree that you curse is withered and dried up. Here's what people don't focus on. Jesus said these words, have faith in god then he says for verily i send you that what uh, you shall say to this mountain a mountain is a situation that's greater than you that's bigger than you that you cannot control that is in your way from getting to the other side a mountain is usually a visible object we're calling those things that be not a, a mountain is not a thing that is not. A mountain is a thing that is. Yes, sir. It's a big one, too. <laughs> That's a big one. God called the things that be not. See, when God, God, sir, when God speaks to you, he speaks in the future. We yeah. speak in the now. God speaks in the advert. I'm mean, just kidding. God <laughs> speaks in the future. So he saw a man. He said, hey, mighty man of valor. That man was hiding. He was not a mighty man of value yet, valor yet. I hear what I'm saying. Yep. So when he gets here, he says, uh, for verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt. Boy, my phone is just going off the hook. And mm-hmm. shall uh, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he, soever he saith. This is a particular mountain. Watch what Jesus said. Speak to the mountain. Watch what Jesus didn't say. Call those things that be not. Mm. Mm. You hear me? I heard it. So Jesus is speaking in specific. There is a specific mountain. Now y'all are wrong with the song, Lord, don't move my mountain, but give me strength to climb. Uh That's against scripture. (laughs) Oh, sorry. Sorry, my bad. That's a song for next week. Okay. Now, He says, it'll move if you don't have doubt. The word doubt means to be at an intersection and confused at which way or perplexed, which way to go. Sometimes doubt is there because this is not God's will. Yeah. And sometimes doubt is there because this object is too big. But we need to understand. But Jesus goes on uh, and speaks more things, which I won't speak about because of time's sake. So, no, we don't we don't call the things that be not. But we only speak to a mountain. Lastly, on this, according to 1 John 5, 14 and 15, you can only speak the will of God. Yes, sir. If it is not God's will, there's no point in speaking or asking for something that is not his will. That's the point right there. If I can speak those things that be not as though it were, what is my agenda? 
in doing it? What is the spirit behind me doing it? Cause so mm-hmm. if I had the ability to do that, man, listen, I would be taking things that don't belong to me. So That's we, right. were, we were not given that. All right. And, and so seek ye first the kingdom <laughs> of God. Of God. And, and his righteousness. Yes. There you go. And then these things, not these other things. Yes. The word other is not there. He said, no. and these things, the things that he already mentioned above. Yes. He says Absolutely. they will be added to it. There you go. Mm-hmm. There you go. Y'all, we're just trying to make sense of some erroneous teachings. We just want you to earn, unlearn some things as you read it for yourself. To get the understanding. Did you say a bronious teaching? Huh? Did you say a bronious teaching? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> oh, oh, erroneous. Oh, I thought you said some of a bronious teaching. <laughs> uh, John 16, 23. And uh, in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Barely, barely, I send to you whatever you shall ask uh, the Father in my name, he will give it to you. You basically answered that already, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it has to be according to will, the will of God. Now, if you're a believer and the Spirit of God is in you, and the Holy Spirit, uh, per Romans the eighth chapter, who maketh intercessions for us, then if you have the Spirit of God in you as a child of God, you're not going to ask God for anything that's not according to His will, anyhow. Yes. That's why Jesus never lost a prayer. Yes. He only asked the Father for what was the Father's will. He never asked for something that was not His Father's will. Now, the only thing we find Him asking for in the garden. It's the part that he didn't want him and his father to be separated. Right. He wasn't talking about the cross. Yeah. Because he've already said, I came here for this purpose. But him and his father had never been separated. That's right. the only thing. Right. That's good. Last and certainly not least, which is the reason why we're here, <laughs> based on yes. the thumbnail, is the 30, mm-hmm. 60, and 100 fold is a problem, has been a problem in our church for a while because somebody is collecting an offering of the people and then they will they would pray and then they would end their prayer with bless these people with a 30 60 and 100 fold because they gave in an offering (laughs) they get this text from matthew chapter 13 and jesus is making the parable of the the serp the sword the seed sores okay the seed Mm -hmm. falling on different places on the ground Mm-hmm. Help us out with that. What is the 30, 60, and 100 fold? And, and, and are we correct when we do this during the offering? <laughs> oh, not a problem. We are incorrect during the offering. It's interesting that the church always uh, asks you to give, but the church never really gives back. Uh oh. When the pandemic took place, how many churches gave back to the people? How many churches told the mother who was not able to come to Sunday school, that's okay, mother, we're going to send a deacon by to give you an offering rather than send a deacon by to pick up your offering. The church or the people are broke today because we've been sowing and sowing and sowing into fertile ground, as we call it, but we've never received an income or nothing. When you look in Matthew, the 13th chapter, Jesus puts forth a parable of which the purpose of a parable is to reveal unto us the hidden mystery of the kingdom of God. That's the purpose, not for the prophets or whoever to make money off of it. Number one, Jesus, this whole thing in the 13th chapter is about a sower who was sowing seed. Mm -hmm. Number two, the seed that the sower is sowing, according to Luke 8, 11 through 15, is the word or the gospel. Right. If that be the case, then the sower is the preacher. Yes, sir. Who sows the word. Uh-oh. Hear me. The sower is the preacher. Uh-oh. Because the word sow means to toss. To plant means to dig and put it in one spot. To sow means to get a handful of seeds and toss it. Right. Okay. So there were four groups that received the seed that was sown. The first group, they heard the message, but they didn't understand it. Verses number 19. Yes. You said (laughs) that, hammer time, (laughs) you said that seed, or sowing that is, Mm -hmm. is tossing. Tossing. Because planting is putting it in the ground. Put it in the ground specifically. So when people ask you to seed, to sow a seed in our churches, we should be throwing stuff at them. That's yeah, throw it at me. That's it. And and you know what? 
you don't really know where it's going. You don't know where it's going. Yeah, because to sow is to scatter. That's, That's it. That's it. Scattered seed. Yes. That's what that is. Scattered seed. Okay. So yes. he mentioned four four groups, and the way we teach that scripture hurts people financially. Of course, it is. Is this guy a financial ear? Oh, the, the stock up guy. The stock up guy. He he wants to be. Yeah. You know, and these and th here's the crazy thing. What's the crazy thing about it? Six hundred thousand ridiculous people follow this follow dude. Is that all he got? Because he wear nice suits. <laughs> oh, and he's talking and about he never up put a tie on. <laughs> yeah, but he sure know how to adjust that microphone. He know how to adjust him. <laughs> he know, and he know how to pre he know how to talk in his car. He always in his expensive little he's truck. Always in that car. He he can't. He ain't got no house. <laughs> he ain't got no house. But the boy makes sense. <laughs> you know, okay, all right. On, oh, yeah. on the weekends, he does, he does yeah. make sense. I have become an investor through that stock up guy, too. Yeah, unfortunately, I sell his products. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I know. It happens. Yeah. yeah My I'm, mom I'm, would be proud of him. Your mom would be proud oh, of him. She would. Stephon Stone says 600,000 plus. You forgot the plus. Oh, my bad. My bad. My bad. My, my bad. Plus. <laughs> plus. Okay. 600,000 people got the nerve. <laughs> people to follow him. I it's, shut up, shut up, shut up. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's, this is why we, so, need, we need Trump. We need Trump. <laughs> this is why we need Trump. Trump, 2024. We, we need. We... <laughs> <laughs> Now you're getting ready to so, ask this finance. <laughs> you're getting ready to ask this financier a question. Yeah, well, I would get ready to say that he is a financier because he made mention that that's why so many of us are broke. As a matter of fact, when you, myself, and I, and Uncle Larry did a, a quick show about finances, and I put it on my Sunday school channel, I was challenged by one person. And that person wanted to know why would I waste God's time and wow. talk about money? Wow. I yes, guarantee sir. you that person who said that got credit card debt. <laughs> yes, sir. I guarantee you that was writing it on a um a thirteen hundred dollar iPhone. So sure it was. But they catching the bus. Yep. But I'm gonna leave that alone. You leave that alone, okay? Yeah. I'm gonna leave that alone. Metal. You so that first group, go, petty. The, 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 the first group, they heard the message, but they didn't understand it. Verse 19. The second group is the one he spoke about. Some fell on stony ground because the sower, there was nothing wrong with the sower. There was nothing wrong with the seed. Right. There was nothing wrong the way he sowed it, but yeah. there was wrong with the person who had the heart. Okay. So the second group was the stony ground. They received it with joy, but the problem is they didn't have no roots. And they fell because of persecution. And, and then the third group, it says some fell among thorns. They heard the word, but what happened is the cares of this world choked the word out and the deceitfulness of riches. Yeah. And they became unfruitful. But here's the last group. When the sower sold and those that had the good heart See, everything is about the heart of the person who hear the gospel. Right. So Walter Jones has been preaching and teaching. I've been preaching and teaching. Our Uncle Larry, stock up with Larry Jones, been teaching and preaching. The problem is we got four groups of people who hear everything that we're teaching. Yes. But it's all about the heart of the receiver. True. Okay. The last group, it was called good ground or they had a good heart. They understood the word. Yes. And they begin to produce. There you go. Back. Mm -hmm. Some produce 30 fold, some produce 60 fold, and some produce even. It's not the same person. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. the one who receives it. Some yeah. of them who heard the word, they produced back 60 fold, some produced back 30 fold, and some of them produced back even 100 fold times as much as had been planted. So it has nothing to do with me uh, paying offering and then God returning it to me. No, it has everything to do with when Sir Walter is at that pulpit, that podium or on his show, preaching to me the gospel of Jesus Christ, or am I, and I'm learning, and then I 
receive it with a good heart and then produce back. Mm. That's what that's referring to. Man, listen, you know what? Mm -hmm. It's compound interest. Just can't. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Larry's probably gone now. We're talking about money, so he's probably walked away. He gone. He gone. Yeah, he, yeah. You know, he. What time is it? Oh, yeah, he's going to have dinner. <laughs> every time we try to so educate him on money. Three. <laughs> every time we try to educate him on money, he walks away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he went away. He will never make it in his life. So, compound <laughs> interest <laughs> is you put money in an investment account, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. The, interest, the interest comes in. And hits it, you make an interest on that money you put in there. Over mm-hmm. time, another set of interests come and hit the interest. <laughs> okay? Yes. That's compound interest. This is the same thing with the sower. Here's the thing. An apple mm-hmm. tree and a an animal come and eat from that apple. Yes, sir. He goes somewhere and do number two. Yes. It falls. Which is? <laughs> is that dung? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, it, it, there's some young people here. There's, there's some, some. Oh kids yeah, here. they don't like to say dung. Yeah, these kids here, this Sam, that's a child. Yeah, they like to say L. L. is at least twelve. I am going twelve, probably fifteen. You know, yeah, these kids they kids. They're kids. They're yeah, kids. David, that's my buddy there. <laughs> David, 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 David is a child. He's he. I had yeah, to from Louisiana, two. that's the man. <laughs> <laughs> he's a kid. These kids, you got to be. You gotta be. All right, so the. The animal dumped, and that seed hits the ground. Guess what's going to happen again? What's going to happen, Doc? He's going to grow. <laughs> nah, you, you're preaching, man. You're preaching here, man. Let me tell you. Let me, wait, hold on. I, I got my Ooh. own styles. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard I heard. <laughs> he ain't said nothing. <laughs> he, just, he just sang the tune. B major, 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 B major. So that's what's happening here, man. <laughs> that seed fell <laughs> on 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 ground, and the Bible says Jesus says that uh, the brother got discouraged. <laughs> the, bro- Sorry. the brother got discouraged. Yeah. And the enemy came and stole it. Mm -hmm. The devil came and stole it. Yes, sir. Remember Simon the Sorcerer? Yeah, I I read about him. I I was never (laughs) around. Well, well, Larry Jones, Simon the Sorcerer. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. He is right here. (laughs) He changed his name. Oh, come on now. Yeah, he blessed me. He blessed me. You know why he blessed me? Yes. I'll tell you after the show. (laughs) I'll tell you after the show. Remember that fifty dollars I I lent a loan to him last week? The one I gave you. <laughs> you remember? That? Yeah. Well, he's paying it back, right? He's paying. It back. <laughs> oh, oh, he's paying it back. Okay. So Simon the sorcerer, the Bible says he believed. Yes. Then he wanted to pay the apostles for this gift because he didn't have an understanding. He didn't have an understanding. Mm-hmm. Even though it said he believed. He believed. Yeah. This is the seed that falls on certain types of ground. People yes. are excited about the word they heard. They go out there and they want to preach into the into uh, the casinos and the bars. <laughs> and guess what? Yeah. They they, yeah. they back drinking. They back drinking. So they believe, but there is no root. There Our is. problem, Sir Walter, is the type of teaching and preaching we're doing. We're doing. We're giving people Chinese food. Sorry, <laughs> of all of my friends. Yeah, lose uh, it because I just had some yesterday. Be careful. Be I, careful. I, I had some today, but you know, five minutes is gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You it's hungry. out in the drought. <laughs> it's, it's out in the drought. It's in Lake Michigan after five minutes. <laughs> you hungry? You hungry? You call it staples. Yeah. See, I'm doing a teaching right now on uh, First Peter, uh, yeah, eight or three and eight and all of that how we are supposed to, yet yeah, there it is, thank you. I know he's gonna say give half of it. That's, there you go, there you <laughs> go. I want my half today. Yeah, yeah right I want here. my half today. <laughs> so I'm teaching on how believers are to respond to opposition, okay? I'm not teaching them about getting rich and, and all that, not right now. 
because we're in a generation, sir, that this generation is weak. We can't take punishment. We can't take correction. We don't know scripture. And we have been given a lot of hot air. Look hot at air. your neighbor, talk to your neighbor. Wow. And Donald Lawrence said it. We've trained our ears not to believe what we said. So now we're calling things that be not as though they were, rather than speaking the truth and changing some things. Oh, boy. Or do what Christ said. He said, speak to the mountain. He didn't say call those things that be not as though they were. Only God does that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So this is where we are. We need more instruction. We need down home, back home, training, teaching of the word of God. Mm -hmm. We can shout later. That's why I have my round tables on Thursday. And we ain't got time to shout today. Today, we need to get down to the nitty gritty and see what the gospel says about how I'm supposed to react against opposition. <laughs> That's good, man. That's real good. Listen, I'm going to let you have the last minute. I need you to recap everything from yesterday and today. How Speak to the people, the ones who've been struggling in this type of, uh, I call it messology, reading <laughs> stuff isogetically, getting it, thinking that that's what it is, uh, and then they teach it to their children, and then they become pastors, and they teach it to their, gener their congregations, on and on and on, wash, rinse, and repeat. And now we're at a crossroads. We're we at a brick wall, or because we've been kicking against the pricks <laughs> for, mm -hmm. for generations. So now mm -hmm. we're at this wall of understanding, like, oh, wow, I never saw this before. And then, and then moment after moment after moment, you see things that you thought were there, but it's not there. But your mm -hmm. cognitive dissonance is has ha, rose up, and some of these people in the comment section are still fighting it. They just okay. they they toss between a rock and a hard place. Yes. Uh, what is that, King Agrippa? Who was that was talking about? Almost persuaded down me. Yeah, 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 yeah. You 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 right there. And I will ag agree with him when he said Paul too much study. <laughs> Have made you. The, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Festus, I think it said that. Yeah, Festus yeah. Yeah. Made too, too much. Made, yeah. 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 Made you mad. Made you mad. So hey, 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 minister to the people right quick. Yes. Blessing to the people of God. I thank you for this opportunity. And I thank God and give a shout out to Sir Walter Jones, a man who I believe that God has called for this time. Because one of the things I've noticed about the body of Christ is we are an unlearned people. And then what has happened is I call it strange fire, which means there are people who are now they got other ulterior motives for preaching the gospel. Even Paul said some preaching to add gain to his, uh, uh, his, his, his stripes or whatever the case may be. My, my problem is that it is a time. And I thank God for a couple of years ago that I said, Lord, it, there's got to be a difference in what we're doing with your word. Your word cannot mean this. I challenge everybody. Do me one favor. Take your time. Shut the TV down, the iPhone off, get to a, a room by yourself, just you and your Bible, and pray and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Number one, don't look in Scripture to see what you can find. Look in Scripture to see what you can, uh, what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. Number two, don't study Scripture to preach a text. Study the Scripture to find out the truth. Study the scripture to, to find out the facts. I do what I call um, a forensic style of studying, which is discovering your lesson from every angle. What did the Bible say? Define the words. What are the key words? What are the key phrases? What is the history of it? What is the backdrop? Is there customs? Are there manners? Is this scripture applicable to what I'm doing now? How can I use this? Because you cannot use every book or every word in the scripture. Uh, there is a doctrine that says we believe that the Bible is the only infallible written word of God. Actually, the Bible contains the infallible written word of God because there are other people that are speaking in the scriptures. That's not infallible. That's a story being told. That's right. When you look at the word context, context is the environment, the environment in which something dwells. Try to find out, lastly, what is the purpose of the writer? What is the writer saying? Two words. Uh, what are my two words? Uh, I'll keep moving. Two things. When you're reading scripture, you want to know what is the writer saying. When you see what the writer is saying, 
Now, this is where it's going to be hard. This is where it's going to hurt. It's very difficult to see what the writer is saying, and it challenged what we have been taught or what you thought that it said. Here's my point. Never study scripture as if you already know what it's going to say. Mm -hmm. Only study scripture as if this is your first time reading it every time. And if you do that, you will be studying the scripture uh, with an open heart to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. So lastly, point number one, no, we, the believers have not been authorized by God to call those things that be not as though they were. Point number two, yes, Jesus says, you shall speak to the mountain and you can tell the mountain where to go and be cast into the sea. But he says, but you make sure that you do not have no doubt in your heart. Point number three, the Bible says, if your brother offends you, go to him and him alone. Or if you have all against your brother, go to your brother and go to your brother alone. If your brother does not hear you, take two or three more people so that every word may be established. If he doesn't hear that person, take him before the church, not the babies. Take him before the church. And if he refuses to hear that, then treat him as a publican. Paul says what that looks like is the whole church has to come together. And then Jesus says, where any two or three of you is gathered in my name, he says, I'll be in the midst. The purpose of him being in the midst is so that he can speak through the church to tell that person what to do. Lastly on that, if you have art against your brother, if you go on Facebook, if you go on social media, if you go on Twitch, if you go on twerk, if you go on anything else, you're moving against the scripture. Once you move against the scripture, you cannot expect God to come on your behalf. I think that's where I'm going to stop that right there. And I am going to leave it right that's there. That's good, man. Good teaching. Good teaching and been confirmed many times in the com comment section. Um, last and certainly not least, uh, we, we called you, so we had to close several times. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Um, because we did say 30 minutes and it's been an hour, so we're false oh, prophets as well. <laughs> we, we're false Those prophets. Those are usually one and a half hours or so. <laughs> yeah, a five-minute yeah. sermon, you know. And, and it's y'all's fault because we asked them y'all's questions. It's y'all's fault. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. So don't, don't hate the player. Hate the game. <laughs> hate the game or hate Sir Walter. <laughs> All right, now right here, I, we got to address um, this comment here. Okay, where is it? It is... Sarethia. And I know where Sarethia is going here. Mm -hmm. I saved the two comments. Mac McIntyre. She says, especially the book not on the tablet. Now she said something earlier. I didn't catch it, but I think that's what she's she's alluding to based off of this next statement. She says, for real, because I found out that the words in scripture means something different from Webster. I I know where uh, McIntyre is trying saying, mm -hmm. and I and I believe in their heart, the the humility of making sure it is done right. Mm -hmm. We cannot speak against the technology of today because it's actually a blessing to us. Correct to have the technology so that we. That's how he and I have gotten even better in the scriptures by using the technology, especially for time's sake. Absolutely. So. Some are fundamentalists. They do mm -hmm. not like phones and tablets in the church. Mm -hmm. They only want the, the, the and he and I paper Bible save because yes, a lot of a lot of my teachings um, on YouTube and and Facebook for the mm -hmm. past ten years mm -hmm. was in this book right here. I mm -hmm. popped this open. You looking for yours too? Yeah. Who? You, you, you stole yours is gone. Your yeah. Who stole? <laughs> <laughs> I, I move all of them in that other room. <laughs> okay. I, I popped this open. The bunker's been with me for 10 years. I popped this book open. All right. And people always <laughs> ask me, what study Bible do you read from? All right. Because they see this. They may see it sitting on the table or mm -hmm. I take a snapshot of it and then I put it on the, on the whiteboard. Yes. Okay. With that being said, um, don't run away from online help because the online help can help you, will help you, but the Holy Spirit will tell you when something is not right. Correct. Online. Yes. Right? So I go to a lot of sources like Bible Hub is, is one of mine. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, go to Lago software. It's a, it's a lot of software out there that really helps us see. Help. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can do a parallel of not just the Bible translations that you, right. you can't, you probably can't do in your, the Bible that you have, unless right. you have a special Bible that you bought yeah. that have the parallels. But even the Bible you have won't have all the parallels, but well, Bible Hub yeah. will have them all. Correct. You understand? And when one, one page, Mm-hmm. Uh, and so don't throw out the technology because the technology is actually helping us to learn it's what God the scripture inspired. says. It's God inspired. God inspired. Help us out with that. Yeah. Technology is God inspired. Yes. Because we can do more with technology than Jesus could have done by himself. Yes. Jesus had 12 men. It took them 12 men a whole lot. But right now, Sir Walter, I'm looking at this thing that says you got 270, which I know is more than that. True. Soon as it'll be over, it might be 500 or whatever. I have many uh, uh, technological books, and a lot of these are real books. This is not a green screen, but I got a I got a tablet right here that got thousands of information on here, Bibles, dictionaries, and while you're on a plane, while you're on a train, I. Because you remember me when I used to go to Rehoboth, yep. I used to have two briefcases, yep. or I would come to Bible class with a stack of books all the way up here. Yes. It's right here now. Yep. It's at the touch of my finger. So I can, and here's the thing, when you're studying, you, you, first of all, you need to find out what the scripture says before you do any referencing. Right. When you figure out what, what the scripture has says, then me personally, Sir Walter, mm-hmm. my next reference is a dictionary yes and then after that my next reference would be a history book what is the history of this so on and so forth so all of that material is much needed now lastly church of god in christ should know better because we have what's called the quarterlies when they first came out with the quarterlies they told bishop mason that that was a sin yes they fought against the quarterlies of the Church of God in Christ until Dad Mason said it was not sin. So now they went on here to use it. So <laughs> something about us, we're afraid to <laughs> adapt, to change. But yeah. none of us are where we used to be. Yeah, that's good. Yes. The Internet came on the scene and I was I was with a Cordic bishop who said, turn it off because it is of the devil. Mm. That same bishop, uh, maybe a, several months later, had a web page <laughs> yeah <laughs> he had a web page because he understood it is mm-hmm. the remember the old boob bop the the boob tube the tv and the, mm-hmm. the church of god in christ would not allow filming done uh, and yeah because they consider this of the devil the new Testament, one-eyed demon the one-eyed demon okay so we don't have much film of oh, this amazing yeah we just don't now the fbi got a lot of film <laughs> oh plenty of it <laughs> but plenty. we don't have because we looked at these things as being demonically influenced, but no, these are our blessings. These the, Daniel talked about, you know, knowledge being increased. Yeah, that's that's what this is. That's what this is. And even a, a believer, no believer from the time that they got saved should be still where they are. Yes. Five yeah. days ago, you should be increasing. So yeah. God is in the technology. But yeah. the devil will work in anything as well. So yeah. stop saying that tech. I'm not saying nobody's saying it, yeah. uh, but stop saying technology is the devil. No, you got to know how to use it. You got to know how to use it. That's I true. preach with my iPad, but I always still have my Bible. I still have yep. my pages. Yep. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Newsome, yeah. Yeah, got, got questions.org is one of my favorites too. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I use it a lot when I'm, when I'm teaching. You see all this, every time I go off my show, you see me with all this paper. All right. I know it's a blank piece of paper, but go ahead. <laughs> no, it's got words on it, as you can see. But here's here's the thing about this, bro. Ella DJ Jones. Run. Hat <laughs> in the hat. No, it says pay your comment bill. You <laughs> are late. <laughs> here's the thing. Uh-huh. I'm not just shuffling papers. Mm-hmm. Everything that's on my desk, I printed it. Yes. From offline. That's what great editorials do. Yep. I printed it. I mean, so, you do it also, but go ahead. <laughs> so if somebody in Patreon and they, they're typing or sending me messages, what have you, I print it out. Mm-hmm. If somebody's sending me an email that I need to, to look over, I print it out. All mm-hmm. my, my assignments from Moody Bible Institute, I print it out. I am a hard yeah. cup copy guy. Mama was the same way. Yep. My, my mother had a whole, a, a, a whole basement full of, full of her notes. 
her notes, and she print. I can't tell you how how rich the the uh, printer ink companies are because of my oh. mom. <laughs> oh yeah. Matter of fact, she wouldn't read the email because she didn't have no ink. She had no ink, so she wouldn't. Read, she wouldn't read it. She said, "Where's my printer? At? I got to read this message. I got to read, read this message." She, as soon as you come over to the house, all you heard was. <laughs> Yeah, then she'll bring it to you. Did Look, she... I'm going to read this. <laughs> yeah, read this for me. <laughs> Mama, the thing said your appointment is tomorrow at 9. That's it. Right, right. Oh. But you know what, Sir Walter? <laughs> this is how I live now from my notes. Yeah. My, my Sunday school, from notes. I always tell people, if you're going to study, have a notepad beside you. Begin to write. And then study your scriptures and study your notes as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's that's pretty good. So thank God for the technology. So I, I read my notes uh, on here on my phone, the notes, and then I print them out, hard copy, and then I hide it up here. <laughs> so if you ever watch me on Sunday school at my church at Faith Temple, I bring nothing up there, just me. And people often ask, why are you the only one that got no book, no nothing up there? Because I just taught the Sunday school lesson Saturday night. Right. So it's in your heart. I got it up in here. Yeah. So now there's three other people that's teaching with me. Let mm -hmm. them teach. <laughs> yeah, let them go from the notes. Let them go from the, their notes. And then yeah. I'll expand, expound on what they're doing, but I don't need nothing else. I just taught that lesson. Exactly. All right. So, man, exactly. I appreciate it, brother. We, we went a little over, but, hey, you know, I figured – I don't know when I'm going to get you back because I figured I, I, yeah. <laughs> I use you. <laughs> <laughs> you can use me up. <laughs> you can, <laughs> you're supposed to be saved. You're not supposed to know stuff like that. Right, right, right. Yeah, my, my bad. Y'all listen, yeah. do me a favor. Will you be a blessing to my brother here? Um, ignore, mm -hmm. ignore that word right there. That's, so, that's Walter Jones. I'm, I'm, looking for, I'm looking for stuff. <laughs> I've been ignoring him all my life. <laughs> all my life I have ignored you. <laughs> I have ignored him. Let me see how how can I do this? You know, I'm still I'm still learning this. Oh, there it is. Okay, it's switch. L. Jones, your um don't send me no money, y'all. Send it to Elder Jones. What is it again? It is Rodney, it is Rodney Jones 519. Rod uh, Rodney Jones. Why's my sisters call me Rodney? 519. There it is. There it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. right there. Rodney Jones 519, you all. Be a blessing to this brother because he didn't he didn't have to do it. Uh, I got to learn how to do that uh, while you on the screen. I'll, I'll figure it out in a minute. Uh, 519, yeah. Rodney Jones 519, right there. Y'all got it. Rodney Jones 519. Go to his cash app. Oh, Be a blessing to him and the ministry. And um, let him know how much you appreciate this teacher for the past two days. We like to share the wealth. Um, you know, the bunkers over here. Oh, thank you. You put it there. Uh, you, uh, what's your Zell? Uh, my email, Rodney Jones 519 at gmail.com. Yo, easy that was. Use the same name, y'all. Just put yes, G. Sir. Same G name, same password. My password is <laughs> give us your last four digits of your social security number, please. <laughs> <laughs> right? Y'all, y'all definitely not Baptists. They on their second service. <laughs> <laughs> he on their second service. All right. Yeah, Sam, did you get the did you get the Zale, Sam? Uh five Rodney Jones five nineteen uh, at gmail.com. Be a blessing to him. He has been a blessing to us. Let me tell you, when I when the brothers come together, me, my brother Larry, and the rest of the brothers, whenever we come together, yeah. you know, we always are trying to find a way to enhance each other. Yes. To bless each other. Not not uh just financially but with the knowledge which is more worth more than money that's it that's so it. we go to eat go to uh they they love the the cracker barrel oh, mm, mm. <laughs> they, let them they, use they, it they, they don't say the name but they, they get to speak in all kind of tongues ah i hate my mom, my mom. i hate my, my cracker mom. barrel and we sit at that table and then we have a meeting of the minds and then when we leave that table we are full of knowledge and encouraged and, and ready to go because we have three content creators, myself, Ella here, and 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 stock up, we are we're gleaning from you all our communities, and then we bring it to the table, and then once we leave that table, we we are we can't we get so excited we can't wait to get to back to our communities to um, mm. share the knowledge that we have 
poured into each other. All right. Brotherly love continue. And uh, it will continue. Big Mama's pancake. That's what Larry get. He always get the Big Mama's pancake. Oh, the Big Mama's pancake. <laughs> yeah, that's what Uncle Larry gets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He does. He does. And um, I'm always stuck with the bill. I don't understand. Uh, the devil come out of that one. I, I don't understand why I'm always stuck. To, I don't understand. I got the lowest subscriber list, but I'm the one stuck with the bill all the time. You know, mm. when the bill comes, I typically get up and go to the restroom because I have to. I have... Yeah, right. So you got what that. Tarantic, uh, you trying to read the check? The bill comes in the alligator. I get it. Let me get that. I, I got the bill. Uh, Let me oh, get that. I, I got it. Let me. I get that for you. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I get it. Ah, oh, somebody took the bill. <laughs> All right, y'all. Listen, I'm gonna go. We we'll see y'all uh, on tonight. Uh, uh, where are we going? Oh, Patreon. See y'all on Patreon. We'll do some more talking on about finances. If you missed yesterday's finance show, you need to go there and see how that how uh, brother he helped um, this woman who was sixty years old. She's turning sixty and she's broke and she's in debt. All right. So go wow. over there to if you haven't watched it, go to Patreon.com. Sign up to the finance room and we'll get you all taken care of. Meanwhile, uh, there is a a link for Larry Jones stock up. Uh, if you want to buy into the class, if you can't afford it, wait, save up your money and buy the class. It is going to bless you. It's going to really, really help you with almost anything you need financially is going to help you. One thing is going to help the, the rest of the things because it, it's it's all mental. You know, wealth is mental, L. Jones. <laughs> it's really mm-hmm. mental. And we don't need a miracle. We just need to save our money. Yep. We don't need a miracle. You just mm-hmm. need to save your money. Mm-hmm. Do the Do the bare minimum. Okay. So go there. The link is in my description on on YouTube and uh, go over there and be a blessing to your house. Okay. All right, man. I'm done. You done? Yes, sir. Done. Good. See you later. Yes, sir. Peace. Women That Men Desire by Sir Walter Jones is a women's guide to men. The authors endeavor to expose men fundamentally with his perspective on the types of women that men truly desire. He has meticulously penned a brilliant and controversial read, bold in its assertion that all women fall into one of four categories. Girl A, the side chick. Girl B, the mistress. Girl C, his soulmate. Or Girl D, his fatal attraction. And when a woman walks into a room, her category is showing. The Four Women That Men Desire is funny, informative, and enlightening. It is a quick read and a must-have for your library. Head over to Amazon.com for your copy.